Most flowering plants need pollinators, around about 90% of them anyway. The rest of the world's flowering plants rely on wind. Three quarters of the crops we eat are pollinated by a range of insects and wildlife, including bats, birds and insects. This poster scribe highlights some of the insects that have been quietly pollinating our flowers for more than 100 million years. The poster also shares some of the plants they like. It's important to note insects don't pollinate for the good of humankind. It's purely for selfish reasons. They do it for nectar and pollen. But in doing so, they travel from flower to flower and fertilise them so that they can produce and set their fruits and seeds. The Put Pollinators First campaign raises awareness of the decline of pollinators in the UK. And it's not surprising when you know that since the 1930s, 97% of our wildflower meadows have been destroyed. With 22 million gardens in the UK, we can help claim back 1.2 million acres and help reverse this decline. In this poster, we're looking at some of the insects that pollinate in our gardens. And first up is the beetle. Yes, they pollinate flowers. They also eat them too. They like open flowers, plants like euphorbias, acacias, water lilies and magnolias. And magnolia appeared before bees had even evolved and the flowers are theorised to have evolved to encourage pollination by beetles. And they developed a kind of carpels that are extremely tough to avoid damage from pollinating beetles. Next up is the bumblebee. Ask anybody to draw a bee and undoubtedly they'll draw you a bumblebee. They pollinate a lot of flowers, but particularly they love tomatoes, comfrey and catmint, to name a few. And catmint, while it attracts bumblebees and other beneficial pollinators, it can also help deter other pests in your garden, like aphids. After bees, the second most popular pollinator has to be the butterfly. So to encourage them into our gardens and boost the butterfly populations, we really need to grow some of the native species. And we can do that from buddleias to stinging nettles. And they love buddleia because it produces nectar that has a higher sugar content than many other garden flowers. However, you only see large butterflies on the buddleia plants because the smaller butterflies can't reach in to drink the nectar. Next up are flies and gnats. Flies simply visit flowers to sip on the nectar. Carrying pollen from one flower to the next is purely incidental and they also lay eggs and feed on other small insects while on the plant. They're not as hairy as bees and therefore they're not quite as efficient in carrying pollen but those who have evolved hairs on their bodies are quite good pollinators and because flies are early flying they can be important pollinators of early spring flowers such as primroses. Globally, there are more honeybees than any other type of bee or pollinating insect, so it is the world's most important pollinator, especially of food crops, with an estimated one-third of our food reliant on pollination by bees. The effectiveness of honeybees is due to their great number and their ability to pollinate a broad variety of different flowers. One flower they love is a sunflower, and you can kind of understand why, because a mature blooming sunflower head can have 4,000 small individual flowers on it. Next up is hoverflies. Now, hoverflies could be seen as the most beneficial pollinator in our garden. There are thousands of hoverfly species, all helping to pollinate, yet none of them sting or bite. And their larva eats garden pests, and that includes the aphid and small caterpillars. Single flowered dahlias are fantastic for hoverflies and other pollinators. They have fewer petals, so they give easy access to their pollen and nectar. Though the less popular cousin of the butterfly, the moth, is quite possibly even more important as a pollinator. Some plants have evolved to manipulate and be pollinated by moths. The wild tobacco plant is a good example. It gives off a good strong scent in the evening to attract the moth. But if the moth goes on to lay eggs on the tobacco plant, the plant stops attracting them and starts opening its flowers during the day instead to a very different pollinator that has no interest in eating it With around 270 species of bee in the UK, under 250 are solitary bees. As the name suggests, they tend not to live in colonies like bumblebees and honeybees, but like honeybees, they love pollinating apple trees. 
What's interesting though is it takes about 250 mason bees to pollinate one acre of apple tree where it would take 10,000 honeybees to do the same job. Just like bees, wasps are important for pollinating our flowers and crops. OK, they're not on the friendly list like hoverflies are, but a world without wasps would be a world with a very much larger number of insect pests on our crops and in our gardens. Most wasps have short tongues. They can't see the colour red either but can see UV light. That means they are more attracted to white and yellow blooms. Lawn daisies, for example. It's quite clear that as we evolve, more and more of the pollinating insects that we now cohabit with are in decline for a variety of reasons. It's becoming increasingly important to think about new ways to support and look after our pollinators. And that's where our gardens come in. We can manage these habitats, introduce a diversity of plants and flowers and provide the environment for pollinators to thrive.